I have been thinking about how church is now clashing with society more than in a long time. See, the power of the gospel in Wales and the UK left a long time ago. 1960s was probably the last glory time for the church here. And since then, things have been generally going downhill for Christianity. And there's been like a shell or a husk of Christianity left. It, meaning, people still sort of behave themselves, sort of roughly of what their grands used to be like. But the, the thing is, they don't really have the Jesus of their grands, so their behavior is only sort of a shell. And I've noticed, um, you probably have as well if you watch the news or read social media or newspapers, the shell of behavior is now coming to an end as well. Because if all you do is behave in a way that you think someone taught you to behave, it's not going to last. Especially when culture starts living completely opposite to what the Bible says. Those that are left just to behave themselves aren't going to last much longer. Why would you choose discomfort and a clash with your friends in society if all you've got is just a husk of a shell of Christianity anyway? And we're heading to that challenge. Did you know that in the first century, the emperor, the Roman emperor Nero killed Christians, put them on a cross, covered them in tar, set them on fire, hated them. Why did he hate them? Because he said they were haters of humanity. Not that they're just Christians, they're haters of humanity. Meaning, what I think is good for my people, the Christians stand against it. They hate where I want society to go. And that is becoming the case again. What the Bible teaches on how people should live, the wider world now doesn't just think, ah, that's funny, make believe stuff, bless them. They think that is immoral and evil. And we want to snuff them out. They stand for things that we now call hateful. And so Christendom, everybody, is by and large crumbling in the West. Look at us. We're not what we once were. Look at the churches around. Not what they once were. We are going to suffer for Christ. It's coming. And He's not going to be the dispenser of worldly comforts for much longer. And we've all been enjoying those things. In the next few years, jobs will be lost. Promotions will be missed for the Christians. Laws will be passed. Prisons will be filled for people who stand for the Bible, as is already happening in other countries. And people will not return to church if they just came for the social credit. Because there's no credit anymore. That was the 50s and 60s. It's not going to be possible to believe in a God and hang on in there if all you want is worldly comforts. But it'll be okay. It will be okay because Jesus is about serving and feeding His people with something much more than worldly comforts. So it will be okay. Whatever befalls us, it will be okay for the Christians. This is the Gospel. Wherever He takes us, he is enough. The apostles were crucified upside down. Jesus is enough. The apostles were boiled in oil for being Christians. Jesus was enough. Isaiah was sawn in half for being a believer. Jesus is enough. James was thrown off a building. Jesus is enough. Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers that ever lived, had depression all his days and he died. Jesus is enough. And all of those are more alive now than they've ever been before. 